Perfection. Nick Bundy hurt me in an arm wrestle. That's ridiculous. For our American viewers, pretty rare that you see that dime. I'm going to presume that was probably me. I've not heard from Greta Thunberg in a while. Can you install a three-phase 22 kilowatt electric vehicle charging point at home? Well, today we're doing exactly that. We're here at this beautiful property in Cambridge where our customers just bought an amazing Porsche Taycan Turbo. And we're gonna be installing a three-phase 22 kilowatt Anderson A2 electric vehicle charging point for him. And we're gonna show you the whole install and show you why not every house can have a three-phase 22 kilowatt electric vehicle charging point. So as always, if this video has been of interest and benefit to you, hit a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Before we start, today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. More about that later, but let's get into it. So I've got Corey with me today. Nice to be able to work together. Um, the distribution board is just behind Corey. Do you want to show them what's, uh, what's inside? So inside here, it's pretty full. However, if we shift this over to L1 over here, keeping it on the same phase, we can put in a three phase MCB. Then we've got a little external um, MCB, sorry, we've got an external RCD to put that onto. And I think this is pretty cool as well. If you look, you've got one 10 volt board, which uh, they've got like a load of American wiring in the house. Um, so this circuit here is for this big three phase, 110 volt trans step down transformer. And then you've got these for our American viewers. Pretty rare that you see that in a house. I don't know, is it center tap turf or is it just? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. Cause we use, in the comments. We use 110 volt in England on building sites, but it's 55 volts a phase. It's not actually 110 volt, but I don't know what this is. Maybe we'll, we'll have to test it. Maybe we'll test it once we've got it on and see. Yeah. Got this huge transformer here for the 110 volt stuff. I mean, it's massive because there are literally 110 volt sockets in every room of the house. So that's pretty cool. But let me show you why this is a little bit of an unusual house because it's got three phase. Uh, I'll show you the meter box and we'll talk about that. So we're here at the electric meter box. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. We have here a three phase 100 amp supply. Now the reason is this is a massive house and there's no way that they'd be able to run the whole house on one phase 100 amps because they've got as we've seen they've got massive transformer for the 110 volt sockets they've got heat pumps air conditioning systems they've got a whole like hvac system for the house uh, and it's just a big house they've got lots of power running off of it but this is unusual for a dwelling most dwellings houses in the uk have a single phase supply so we get our a lot of customers asking us, can I have a 22 kilowatt charger at home? And for most of them, if they don't have a three phase supply, then they can't unless they pay an extortionate amount of money to get their distribution network operator to actually upgrade to a three phase supply. And that can cost 10,000 pounds sometimes to get a three phase supply put in. So hopefully this is informative for anyone who's thinking about getting a, a three phase charger. We'll show you what a three phase head looks like and then you'll know whether you have that and whether you could install a three-phase charger at your house. So this is a three-phase main cutout fuse. So we've actually got three fuses rather than just one, which you usually have in a, a normal domestic dwelling. That means you've got three times the number of amount of power that you can take. So three times 100 amps to run the house. So essentially 300 amps of capacity. And we can put a three phase charging point in, which will spread the load of the charger across all three phases and it will pull up to 32 amps per phase rather than just 32 amps one phase. So if your house has three of these and three tails coming out the top, you could get a 22 kilowatt three phase charging point installed. But if you've only got one, then you've only got a single phase system and you will need an upgrade if you want a 22 kilowatt, which could cost a small fortune. Here we've got the three phase meter. So the tails come out of there into the meter and then out of the meter, two of these phases go straight through to the distribution board. The other two they've cut into it with this Henley block, a hundred amp connector block to run a supply for a summer house. But essentially those three phase tails go through to the distribution board in the house. What I was thinking is just to put it straight next to the distribution board. 
We've got cool. a Schneider four pole RCD to put in there, which is going to be dropped off to us any moment. Put it there and then just like a couple of bush and couplers maybe yeah. into the side of the board. And then just go straight out with the supply cable for the charger. Mm. What do you reckon? Looks good to me. Yeah. And the other just option enough. would be to put it below, I guess, but it's a bit tight for space. Um, I think we'll be able to work it out. Hashtag not sponsored. Yeah. So in here, this is the three-phase distribution board that we're going to be powering it from. And as you can see, it's quite full with um, spaghetti of wiring. There's a lot of circuits running off this. What we're going to be doing is moving this 20 amp breaker to the other side. And then that gives us a three-phase way that we can use to install the three-phase circuit. And then out of that, we're going to take the conductors through and across to here to a little external enclosure which is going to have a four pole RCD because the Anderson charger that we're installing needs to have RCD protection type A 30 milliamp RCD and then out of that RCD we're going to run down through the garage I'll show you the route around the house to where the charge is going so the cable is going to be running along here this is the garage that we're in right now but as you can see there's a slight obstacle some very nice rims and tyres. I think it's probably our customer's winter tyres that he keeps in here and then he swaps them over twice a year. Uh, we're going to have to move those, so there's going to be a little bit of a careful operation to move those out of the way. Then we can clip the cable all the way along behind those. And then outside we've got this nice black bit all the way around the house, which we can clip the cable to and it'll kind of blend in because the cable's black. So we're coming through from the garage out to here all the way around, low level, along under the stairs, around here, and then up, and the car charger is gonna go on the wall here, ready for the Taycan, which will be parked here. Hey Heston, what's cooking? All right, so this is the enclosure, and I've lost my little center punch. I don't know where I've done it with it, so I've just drilled two little pilot holes, because I hate it on a nice metal enclosure when you see everyone's guilty of it, the drill bit sliding off. So I've drilled a smaller hole, as a little pilot for this one. And then obviously just centering them up with my set square as well. And then I can use that same measurement on the board in there just to keep things neat and tidy. So a little tip of the day here. When you're drilling into a board where you've got a lot of cables behind, you obviously don't want to drill through and slash into the cables or the wires. I just use this um, little filling knife and you can slide it in behind the wires, behind where you're going to be drilling. You drill into that instead of drilling into the, the wires. Corey, do you want to drill the hole? Yep. Do you trust me? Close your eyes. Do you trust me? Isn't that a line from a film? Probably a lot of films. Yeah. I like this though, it's a good tip. I've always just got a bit of wood. Perfection! This hole wasn't me. We got audited again, by the way. Oh yeah? Code one? Yeah. Shut up. Uh, I'll show you. It said that's what it said on the title of the email, but actually there was only code threes. The code threes, one of them was no RCD uh, test label. Right. But it was a zappy. There was a main switch and an MCB, no RCD in the board. We came straight off the tails. It's self tests. So it literally had no RCD test. No, no RCD to test, so why would you need an RCD test label? No, it self-tests, doesn't it, when it starts up? Oh, well, the Zappi one does, but yeah. I mean, they probably wouldn't even know that there's an RCD in the Zappi. They're looking at the board and thinking, why is there no... Board. They're talking about no RCD test label on the board. That's ridiculous. So I found my bush wrench, so I'm not struggling with my, uh, my grip, so I can just use this and it makes it a whole lot easier, because it's actually designed for the job. I know you can get the bush socket, which Jordan has, but we don't seem to have the 25mm ones at hand. Um, to be honest, we're not really doing them, being at the minute primarily domestic, we're not really using bushes a whole lot. Um, we just shove our work through sharp metal, generally. Um, 
but yeah, it's nice having the proper tool for the job. Right, should we move these tiles, uh, these tires? And then we've got a clear route. Let me get a slow mo of this. Wow, they are pretty chunky. Like me. I don't know how I've ended up with the cardboard. Here, you take the cardboard now. Well, I don't do much physical work these days, so it's, it's good for me to, you know, have a bit of a workout. But these are actually the same stud pattern as my little caddy. Those ones, he's kind of just He's not put up. any cardboard on between, yeah. has he? Carl's using petrol. Well, if you just make it unaffordable and say, ah, oh, it's because of us and so, we can't afford cars, don't buy a new car, keep your existing one and keep it on the road, Oh, you can't afford petrol, I guess you have to be more economical with your mileage. It's like, I've not heard from Greta Thunberg in a while. She's done her job. She's, on, she's done She's it. retiring on an island in the Bahamas. Uh, right, well, what is this before we unplug it? Prometheus Lighting Instruments Limited. Uh, 10 amp, 10 hmm. lamp unit power supply. I think what that is is just an outdoor lighting supply. David Savory did a really good video on doing lights as ELV outside rather, um, rather than what we usually do and I think that looks like it's on a TP link plug which is probably a remote switch so that you can switch the lights on and off outside remotely. While we're here the customer wants us to quote for two extra jobs one is this sock well they want an outside socket because they've got this this great guy who comes every couple of weeks and like does a proper detailing on all their cars and like with a jet wash and stuff but he doesn't have an outside socket to plug the jet wash into at the moment so we're going to quote them to just put an extra outside socket on the wall there and also they want an extra socket in the utility room <laughs> if you can hula hoop this without breaking your spine then it's a fast track to a gold card in my opinion what for for the nicest way of putting an outside socket from here i'm thinking drill a hole in the bottom of here i wonder if you've if we've got any um, MYYJ 2.53 come off that one. Is that fuse spur even switching anything now? We take it off. Yeah, I've you got, got a screw drum. Yeah. Actually, yeah, DB1. I wonder if it spurs through something on the other side. It's got a flex outlet, so it might have just done something that's now not used. 20 mil straight out the side of that. And they could even isolate it from here if exactly. they wanted to. So you know how sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees? Well, I was talking about coming off this socket and Corey was like, why don't you come off that spur that's not being used? And I was like, oh, that's a clever idea because this is actually on its own circuit and it's not even in use anymore. It used to have some kind of flex going out of it. Now it doesn't. Um, so it's perfect for us to spur off this to run an outside socket, which they could even isolate separately with this switch. So we'll do that. I love sunshine. Doesn't it make you feel happy when the sun is shining, the birds are singing, the air smells fresh, it smells like fresh grass and flowers. It's a good day, but it's probably just because I'm on the tools and I like being on the tools. It, it is more satisfying than being in front of a computer all day. I've just realized this is actually my first time working out of that van. Like actually properly working out of it, not just driving materials to and fro. So that's quite nice. So I'm just thinking about running it on the cable on the outside. Yeah. Or whether we go really low. I'd probably take it really low. Yeah, I don't, because I just don't really know what this is and if it's going to be really crumbly or not. I don't um, think so. I think with a sharp drill bit you'll be fine. So what you reckon, just go basically in the corner. Yeah. It's probably the neatest way, isn't it? Because without taking this off. And then if you're drilling that, it's kind of, you're going to have to drill down at an angle and then the water's going to sneak in. Try one hole and see how it goes. I mean, I can always repair it. Yeah. They've got black paint there. I'll just do, because we're going to have to go around. Yeah, you this probably have to, have to chisel a little, a little, bit, little bit out. If I do one there. Oh, my elbow. This bit sounds like a crunchy bag of marbles. 
What did you do to it? I wrestled Nick Bundy, is what I did to Oh, him. yeah. Oh, he's going to be moaning about that for weeks now. Nick's, oh, Nick Bundy hurt you me. You should see the other guy. Wrestled. You should see him. He's, oh, he's got arms. If mine sounds like marbles, this is going to sound like a bag of bowling balls. Yeah. You know what's quite... really annoying, Corey, is that we're going to have to, either way, we're going to have to pull it out through the wall now because the gland is on. Yeah, so I'll just run it out like this. And therefore... There's a chance to work out. Ooh. Personally run around on big wipe to make up for my mistake. No, I'll own up to my mistake. <laughs> See you later guys, I'm off to get lunch. This is like, this is a three man job. So I'm just gonna have a little rant here for a second. Corey landed it in at that end first. So now I've got to pull the whole length of cable all the way through the hole, run it all the way around behind all the various ob obstacles. Whereas if we'd have glanded it afterwards, we could have literally shoved it through the hole, glanded it in, and then everything outside would have been easier. Anyway, rant over. Think twice, do once. So today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. Now I want to tell you a bit about it. It is a software for tradespeople to keep track of their business. It's like a job management platform, basically. So we use it to do all our quotes, our invoices, to book the jobs in for the guys on site. And the great thing about it for me, so like today I'm here, I can look straight away on my phone and I can see the job for today. I can see the list of materials that I'm supposed to be using, a brief description of how the job's supposed to be done so that I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I can log my time on the job so that the office know how much to invoice the customer at the end of the day. And it just works really, really well. So if you're looking for something like that to make your life a bit easier in terms of your paperwork side of things, head to the link in the description. There's a 50% off discount code for three months using our special code. So this is the circuit that we need to move. It's labeled as aircon loft. So we can actually just turn that off. And then what we're going to do is take this breaker out, put it in there, and then that will free us up a slot for this new 40 amp breaker. RCD is here. So um, that's all good. In fact, why don't I get you to do the outside work and I can do this work? Go for it, happily. Yeah. Um, I've not even got a, I've not even got a charger to second fix, so I'm definitely getting a good deal. Our audience loves to see our pets, so we're we're very happy for you to be in the video. I do love these drills. The hammer action on them is so good. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. Legend. Uh, oh yeah, that's perfect. what you wanted it. Green hole. That is, that is awesome. Great. Yeah. I don't know how to buy it. Okay. It? So if I drill through now, that should be long enough to get. Through. Yeah, that's great. And then we can put the bush and coupler on the inside, and it's all nice and sealed yeah. up. We've got some conduit glue. <laughs> it's lunchtime. What if? Um, if we get a, because, um, oh no. I'll remake it, so I've damaged it a little bit. So I'm just starting to connect this end up now. I'm gonna come out the bottom of the RCD with the armored cable going to the charge point and then from the board, from this new circuit that we've put in, we'll run some singles into the top of the RCD, just so we've got that RCD protection for the charger. So just getting this end connected in now. Just trying to dress the cables as neatly as I can in this board, but it's not really easy when you're working with a board that's absolutely chocker full of unneatly dressed cables. It kind of makes you want to rip it all out and start again, but not gonna happen. So we just make the best of it. I kind of keeping them around the edge so that there's plenty of slack and I'm just gonna dress them into the top of this RCD here. And the outgoing side is already done, so then we're good to go. So that's all dressed in now, nice swoops in. 
it's very satisfying to do that. Um, nice and neatly dressed in, ready to go, connected into the distribution board there. Corey's doing the other end, clipping the cable in, and then we'll get it ready to exactly where the charging point needs to be, but we can't actually mount the charging point until it arrives, which is going to be later on this week. So we've got another job to do now inside. I'll see you in there. So here we are at the utility room where we're going to be installing an additional double socket. Basically at the moment they've got this double socket feeding this extension lead which is trailing across the floor to feed their fridge freezer which they've added in this corner and obviously it's not ideal just having a trailing extension lead, it doesn't look great so they've asked us to put an additional double socket in this corner here just so that they can feed the fridge freezer. So we're going to have to chop in a box for that, drill through across behind this laundry chute here and then chase in into the back of that socket which is on the ring we can spur off of it no problem but it's just going to be a little bit of multi-tooling and chasing and drilling now for those of our viewers who don't know this is what we call a ring circuit so there are two conductors going all the way round in a loop back to the consumer unit and there'll be two wires coming out of the circuit breaker at the consumer unit it just shares the load around all of the various cables and it means that you can use smaller cables with a higher rating of circuit breaker so in this case a 2.5 millimeter cable with a 32 amp circuit breaker but we have to check to make sure that we do have ring continuity before we just spur off of it otherwise we might have a bit of a problem so we have to do a ring test on that that's going to be the tricky part is that this is quite a thick thick bit of wall essentially um, and then if we measure just going to make sure that we're at the same depth here, 58 centimetres deep. Okay, so that is exactly where we want to be. So that, if we drill through the short chute, we will come out here, which is perfect. Sometimes the temptation is to work around stuff, but it only takes like a few minutes to move things and then you get the job done a lot faster and more efficient because you've actually got a clear space to work. So sometimes it's just good to do that little bit of planning. So we've got a nice little mat, which would just go on here, just to protect these surfaces, while I chop this little bit out. I'm a really good friend because I was just about to abuse Corey's croppers by using them to pull this little knockout out of the back box and then I thought, you know what? If it was me, I'd definitely not be happy if someone was doing that with my nice sharp croppers. So I've got my own tool. And I'm just going to wiggle that like that. And that's the proper way to do it without abusing your colleagues' tools. Dime, I'm going to presume that was probably me. Have a listen to this. Sounds horrendous. I think the clutch or something is gone inside the drill. My old DeWalt drill I had for four years and I've just given it to my dad now because we got given these and he's still using it, it's still working fine. I've had this for like a few months and it's broken. Well it just sounds pretty it sounds pretty awful, but I don't think we've got the warranty on it because usually Hilti has a lifetime warranty, but I think because we were given them for free to review. I don't think they get abused really. Like I think they see just fair use for a tradesman's tool. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that to be honest and what's annoying is I left my DeWalt one with my dad so I don't even have a spare drill to do it with. I'll have to go get his Makita. When you're going back to Makita you know you have an issue. So we're all done in here, went in fairly smoothly, managed to chase out the bricks without causing too much damage and run everything through that little cupboard in a bit of trunking. It's all neat, I've just got to put a little bit of silicon just for finishing touches. I have filled in the chases just roughly. My decorator friend's going to be coming around and he's going to be doing it all properly so he can sound it down, final fill and then paint and it'll be like we were never here. 
So we've got the cable in place now. Lee and Luke are going to be here on Friday just putting the charger on the wall, getting it tested and commissioned and everything. But it's been a good day. We've got quite a few little things done. Hopefully it's been interesting to you guys and it's answered the question, can I have a three-phase charger at home or not? But if you do have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer them as best as we can. If you did enjoy the video, hit a like and subscribe because it is free and you'll get regular video updates from us and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching guys and have a great day.